Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint a uh, just a pretty little rose greeting card. I was fooling around in my sketchbook with a brand new set of paints. This is the Artify 58 watercolor set and I was just kind of testing it for flow and whatnot and I just doodled this up and I thought, oh that's really pretty. I think that would make a really cute greeting card. So I've got a 5x7 greeting card here. I'm not even going to bother taping it down because I don't think I need to. And I've got my paints right here. It does have a little small mixing area. The colors that we're going to use are uh, this peachy color here. We're going to use that uh, that other kind of like peachy color. We're also going to use this kind of like um, turquoise blue. It's not a very dark color. We're going to use a, uh, a nice crimson. I think it was this one here. And we're going to use a kind of sap green color and also just a brown for some branches. But actually, you could mix a red and a green to make brown if you're on an even more limited palette. I'm going to start off by taking some of the pink. All right, I'm just going to push that out of the way. I think I'll zoom in a little bit too. There we go. You'll probably just be able to see the mixing tray. This is a pretty large footprint on this palette, so it can be kind of difficult. Now, I'm thinking that... Let's say flower, leaves, and I'll put the rosebuds over here instead of up there just so I can fill the space a little bit better. So I want to start the top of the flower up here. A little more water here. I just basically want to make a little bit of a... some areas for my, my darker colors to flow once I get them in there. But I like to leave a lot of dry paper so I can come in with some crisp lines as well. And I gotta be careful not to make this too big because I don't have as much space here as I did on my um, on the the one I was in my sketchbook. Oh my gosh, it's the first time I'm talking today. <laughs> Do you ever get that? It's like I haven't talked to people today. I'm a little rusty. See some of those lines like crisp like that. I like to have some of the edges kind of crisp, but I also like to just let the paint do its thing and kind of float and flow. Sometimes the edge lines can get a little um, intimidating because it can be confusing to know what to do on the edge of a flower. And I find that like less is more and you can almost just let those colors just kind of float out to nothing. I'm gonna grab some of that peach. I do wish this had a bigger mixing area that's a, uh, I should probably just grab out my little, uh, my little ceramic palette. It's over on the shelf over there though. <laughs> oh, I rinsed, I washed it. And I have this little shelf of where I put my water containers and things while they're drying. A little bit of that right in there. And I just want to kind of fade it out. So I'm just going to go in with some water. And I like to do that because if I fade out these edges, then it gives me an opportunity for the um, the leaf colors to fade into that, and I like that look. I know not probably not everybody does, but I really like that look of some of like the leaves and stuff fading in as well. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to do our leaves. I'm going to pick up some of that sap green, and I'm going to start by putting a big one up here. Hopefully, a wool from the will fit the buds in somewhere. It probably won't be just exactly the same. Some of that teal. Or turquoise color. It won't be exactly the same. They never are exactly the same. And don't be afraid to turn your your paper, especially if you're working on a sketchbook, because those are really easy to turn. These greeting cards are really good too. Look, we're getting a little a little bleed. Now my sketchbook, I was just um a cellulose sketchbook is Arteza cloth bound. I like those a lot even though they're cellulose. This actually is a cotton paper and this is one of the watercolor greeting cards by Arteza. I'm not sure if you can still get them. It seems like they went out of stock um, almost immediately uh, after they came out. I wish I would have bought an extra pack. Oops. Got some fuzz or something on my brush. You just never know, right? I mean, I still have plenty. I still have another box, I think, after these. But you never know. You never know what you're really gonna like, a, like something and then you do and then you can't find it. Oh well. It'll probably be easier to get once the pandemic's over too. And things can, things can move freely. So 
I've had these, I've actually had these paints for a while. Um, the Artify company sent me these when they sent me the, the, um, the little tiny sepals over here, the little tiny petals that are around the center stem. Um, they had sent me these as well as the markers, and I just had never gotten around to them because it just, I just kind of thought, oh, another another set of budget paints, you know, another set of budget watercolors. They're really nice. I mean, they're they're similar quality to all the other fan sets. I think all those fan sets are made kind of in the same place, but uh, I do like them. I'll do a little leaf up here. I might be going a little overboard with the leaves. We can do fewer. I think I will be able to fit my little um, my little buds up there. I also think I'm going to want a little bit more color in here. While it's still a little wet. It's funny, you set out to paint you set out to paint one thing and then what you end up with is completely ends up being completely different. A couple little buds. A little bit darker in there. I love to get the colors blending in with each other, so I do like to go in and get the stems in the little the little hips. I'll circle under each rosebud. A few little leaves. Just to fill it in a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna grab a little, actually I'll just mix the red and green together and make a brown, I think. Mix a nice brown. Anytime you mix complementary colors you'll get, you will get a, um, you'll get a brown or a gray. And then I did want to have a couple loose leaves, so let's see, we'll do one right here on the end of the stem. We'll do one up there. We'll do one under there. We'll grab some more of the teal. Need to give it a little serrated edge. hard time working in a smaller space, um, a smaller paper, especially after I've worked on a little sketchbook page. A sketchbook page can be very freeing. I probably should have done this on a sketchbook page, but um, but I thought the, the nice thing about a greeting card is just so practical and there's like no... Like you're not worried about a greeting card. You're going to finish it. It's going to be pretty when you mail it away, right? You can mail it away. You don't have to like keep it forever. The person you send it to doesn't have to keep it forever. It's kind of like a nice ephemeral little little thing. Now I'm taking some of that bright red and I'm just going to trace the edges, the serrated edges here and there. Because something I've noticed about roses is that their their leaves usually have a little touch of that color on them. I think it's just a pretty little detail. I think I'll also grab some of that and maybe kick up some of the uh, some of the uh, the petals in here. Make them a little bit more distinct. You don't want to overdo it, but sometimes you just need like a little bit more a little bit more definition. It's hard to tell what's what, too. It's hard to tell, do I need more? Should I just leave it be? 
often the best thing to do is just give a take a break and look at it later um because like i'm like oh this is all right this is pretty as i was painting the other like the demo the uh the one in my sketchbook but i was like yeah that's you know it's nice there's nothing nothing to write home about but it's all right then i look back at it later i'm like oh that's actually quite pretty i think i would like to do that for a tutorial so you don't necessarily see how it really looks until you're all the way done but i think i believe that as is i think it's pretty you could add some spatter to it if you want maybe with like the turquoise okay let's do that that'd be really pretty i'll do it on mine and i know some people are like no don't splatter don't splatter but you know what? I'd rather splatter on mine. I'm going to clean up a little space here so I can make a puddle. And if you guys don't like it, then it's better that you saw how it looked. And if you don't like it, then you don't do it on yours. But if you're questioning, like, hmm, I wonder if that would look good. You can see how it looks like on mine. And if you don't like it, then you don't have to do it. I'm going to just kind of put my hand here to protect a little bit. Another thing you could do, oh, I love that, how it's like sputtered into the wet paint. You could also let it dry, and if you let it dry, then you can, um, then you can blot off any spatter that you don't like. I like that mixing into those, uh, those leaves, though. I think that's really pretty. You can also spatter water. And it can help those colors float a little bit if you want to have a little bit more like maybe you have a big area that you feel like you need a little more you need to balance it out a little bit that's a good way to do it i i like that i think that's cute okay i'm gonna call it done i hope you enjoyed this if you did please give me a thumbs up. This is just kind of a fun, break yourself in for the day of painting. Start something fun and easy like this and then go on and, and work on what you want to work on. Something that's a little bit less, a little more precious. This is, this is not precious at all because, you know, you'd mail it away. If you mailed this to somebody, they're not going to say, geez, Lindsay, that's not your best work. They're going to be like, oh man, Lindsay thought of me and she sent me a letter. That's pretty cool. You know, think about it like that. I think it's cute. I would tack it up on my fridge. <laughs> Well, thank you so much again for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. It helps my channel. And let me know what you think of this in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.